Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all well and staying safe. Gosh, what, what a glorious day it is today. Perfect for going out and videoing and taking photographs. And I've seen that some of you are already creating your videos and sending them through. So that's uh, really good. They're, they're looking good, I have to say. And I'm pleased to see it's covering so many young people as well. I'm going to have to uh, keep a check on my work because I think some of you are going to be snapping at my heels soon wanting my job. So, um, but you're doing good. So you, you may have shot your videos now um, and if you haven't seen it, I did do a live stream a couple of weeks ago that um, was showing you some tips on how to film. So that's actually, you can go back, there's a link below this video so you can go and watch that again. But today I wanted to talk to you about editing. And I just wanted to go through it in very basically, but I am actually creating a library of videos on how to edit using different software, but they all have a very similar way of working. They all kind of do the same thing. And you can spend, you can get some for free uh, that can kind of come with your computer or your device. And there are some that you can pay for that aren't too expensive and there are trial versions of things and I'm going to point those out in a moment and there are also some expensive ones well a bit more expensive if you really really want to get into this and from what I'm seeing that that may happen one day right so let's just talk about the editing and um, how you can actually uh, put it together and I've got some clips and we're going to use those and I'm going to go into iMovie which is the one that comes on the Mac. Now I'd love to show you all the different editing software out there. This is a popular one and it has features that are similar to others and they all have the same concept. So let me just flip over here to my my PowerPoint. Okay so the thing about editing software and I'm going to mention the software in a minute some of them it's not all of them but they're the most popular ones. So the idea is, is that you can choose your clips, whether they be video or photos. You can add music and things like that as well. You choose where you want the clip to start and where you want it to finish. And it's called an in point where it starts and an out point where it finishes. They're good to know because on most software there are keyboard shortcuts. And believe it or not, I is for in and O is for out. You don't have to know the shortcuts, but as time goes on and you do more of these, and I hope you do, you'll uh, find out more about that and that all these shortcuts can speed up the editing. The thing about using editing software is you want to be able to order the clips. So you choose the beginning and end of each clip, you pop it in and then you can move them around. You can change it later, so if you decide you want to make it longer or shorter, you can do that or even get rid of that clip. Now, if you are into editing, you may have noticed or watching films that sometimes between a clip, sometimes they just go from one clip to another, but there are other times they have transitions. So they dissolve from one to another. And some have these things called wipes where you see it slide across the screen. And we're going to take a look at that. And these can soften the transition from one place to another. Now, quite often you don't need transitions. They can be useful if you're moving from, say, one sort of location to another can be useful. Or if time has passed and you want it to appear as though there's a clock and you may have seen a clock wipe, which does like a circle and it fades from one to another. There's all sorts of them. I would say be careful. Don't go crazy with them. They, are, they can go a little bit overboard and stick to a style as well. Another important thing that you will want to probably add to your video is titles. So you may want to put a title at the beginning showing what it is. And at the end, why not have a credit? Tell people that you made it and who helped make it as well. I don't know about you, I quite like seeing the credits of people's names at the ends of movies. And actually it's quite nice to listen to the music. Quite often the music's great. And if you watch anything like Disney or Pixar or some other films, they quite often have some other little extra clips, even right at the very end. So you might have to stick around for that, a little surprise for people. Maybe you want to do that. Now, someone did ask last week as well about adding a voiceover. Now, not all the software can do this, but in iMovie, it is built in that you can record a voiceover right there using the software, the editing software. 
Once you're done, you need to be able to share this with the world. So there is, and every bit of software has this, where you can share or export it so you can then upload it, send it over to us, and then you can get yours uploaded as well. So a lot of people share and export and then put it onto things like YouTube, which is a great platform. And actually YouTube's a good place to go and have a look at what other people are doing and also learn from them. One way to learn about filmmaking and photography is to look at other people's work and actually see what they did. Like if they start off and they see a big establishing shot that's a wide angle showing everything and then they mm -hmm. close in, they close, they zoom in and don't, uh, so they zoom in so you can see more. So, sorry, I just got to check something with Lisa here. Is, uh, Connie says it's freezing, she'll have to watch it later. Oh dear. Sorry, if it is freezing, this will stay up online so you will be able to watch it later. Right, let me just talk about the editing software. So, as I said, I'm using iMovie. I've got a Mac here. A lot of Macs, it comes with it or it is on there. You could just pay a low price for it. On your iPad or even your iPhone that you can get on iOS, you can also get it and Again, it's low price or it's free if you've paid for it on perhaps on your Mac. It's, it's easier to do on the iPad, but if all you've got is the iPhone, it's very good. And you can do a lot of what you can do on the desktop. And I have used it if I'm on holiday and I haven't taken my computer with me. I do tend to then put it onto the phone or the iPad and I do a bit of editing there. By editing it whilst I'm away on holiday, that actually also gives me a chance to back it up because I've had to put it onto another device. If you're using Windows, there's a free one on there called Windows Movie Maker. It's quite basic, but you could still create a video and it has the elements that iMovie has. iMovie is made by Apple and Apple, you probably don't know this, but for a very, very long time, they've been doing things around video editing and Photoshop and all that kind of things. And they're kind of the company that are kind of known for it in the computer world. There's another one, Adobe Premiere Elements. Now, this is on adobe.com and there is a free version, well, a trial version for 30 days, which would give you plenty of time to create it. It's also at a very good price and there is an education discount as well. There's Photoshop Elements and I think I looked a bit earlier, it's just, I think it's 79 pounds, 99 pence for both, so great quality. They have a lot of the features that the Adobe Premiere Pro has, which is, the prim which is more like the professional version or if you get really get into this and start creating stuff. But Premiere Elements does a lot of that. Premiere Pro is a lot more expensive and you have to pay a subscription every month. Again, there is education discount, so teachers, students all get this, so it, and it's easy to do. Um, with those, there's a seven day trial, but if you want to get a bit more into it, Adobe Premiere Elements is great. And then for the Mac, if you want to go up that level, and this is the more professional version of iMovie, is Final Cut Pro. And it, iMovie and Final Cut Pro look so much the same. It's amazing, and they have a lot of very similar features. You guys are very lucky when I was your age. We didn't have all these fancy bit of software. We had to get film and cut it and then glue it together. Tape recorders came along, but you had to have a room full of tape decks and things. So I'm just going to flip over now to our iMovie. Um, so we can take a look at what it's doing there. It's um, so let me just go over to iMovie. This is iMovie. It's similar, perhaps the layout and the styling of it might not look the same as some other software. But what I want to do first is create a project. Some of them call them projects, some of them call them sequences. So, but basically project is a common name for these things. And you can see here, up in the top left, it's got create new. So I'm just going to click on create new and you'll see I've got the choice of creating a movie or a trailer. So let me just click on the movie and it comes up with this screen here. So I am now just going to 
The next thing you want to do, so there's nothing in here. This is where I can choose media. You can see it's got the name of my movie here, which I'm going to change later. This is where, in this section here, all of my clips would appear. And over here is where I have got my playback, like your TV monitor, where you'll see it. Down the bottom is where all my clips are going to go in this sequence. So the first thing I've got to do, which you probably guessed, is to import my media into here. And I have put them all into one folder. So I've got some movie clips and I've got some photos in there as well. So I'm going to click on import media. Now, depending on what you're using, you might just see the files come up as you would normally do if you were opening up some other document. In iMovie, I've got to select my drive, which is this mobile media you can see on the left here. And if I scroll down, I've got this folder here called Video Editing Training. And if I click on any of these files, you will see I have some clips. The JPEG, that's going to be a still shot, MP4, MOV, those kind of files, they're movie files, and down the side here you can see it actually in this column here, file type, it says image, movie, and so on. So you can get all of those. To select them, you can go through and choose one by one. If you're using a, this iMovie, and you can choose it by clicking on one, and then you can hold down the command key and click on others as well. If you're using a PC, and you're doing this on Premiere or in Windows Movie Maker, you can do the same kind of thing. You just press Control. If you're using a Mac, you use Command. So I'm just going to click on Import Selected. Now, if these needed downloading, because if you know about the cloud where you might have your files stored, you might see it having to download. So I can tell here which ones of these are movies just because they don't have anything in the corner here. These ones that are photos have got a little symbol of a camera in the corner. So you can just go and use those. And you can see that if I hover the mouse over and I, you can see that I can go through here. That's where our next door neighbor's cat. Here's our cat as well. And this is another one having a sleep. So you can see that if I move through it, nothing actually happens. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose some clips to go in here. And it's really easy to do. So you can play it. So by the way, hovering over and sliding through like this is called scrubbing. You scrub through the timeline and you can do it here and in the timeline below. So let's just go to this second clip here. There's our cat enjoying the sunshine. And I'm just going to go back to here. I can play it. And you can do that just by clicking on the play button on the right hand side. Now, you might have seen that when I moved the mouse over it, it came up with spacebar. Spacebar, the space on your keyboard, works on pretty much any software to play and pause. So if I press that, it plays. I think that's where I'm going to start it from. So I'm going to press I. I'm going to press spacebar again and it plays. And it goes down to our other cat here. And I can choose that by pressing O on the keyboard for out. There's a little plus sign here next to it. Now I can either click and drag or I can hit that plus sign and it pops it down here into the timeline. And you can see I can slide over it. Now I might think actually I'd like a little bit more of her right at the beginning. I click on this clip down here in the timeline. And you can see I can click and drag to extend it. And if I wanted to, I can click and drag to shorten it. OK, so let me put another clip in. Let's choose this one here. This is our next door neighbor's cat. I was kind of following her. Now, what I can do is click here. On the sides, you can see they've got these handles. So I can actually click and drag that across. There we go. And then I can choose. I can go back to here and get a bit of that. So for this one, rather than clicking on the plus sign, I'm going to click and drag that down to here. So if I was to play that now, let me go back to the beginning. I can now see that clip and then it's going to jump to our next door neighbor's cat. 
I can add in more. Let me scroll across to the end here. I've got our cat here also walking along the fence. Let me just move to there. It's jumping around a bit because I was on a very long lens, telephoto lens. It's got a lot of magnification. It's hard to keep steady. I'm going to press I and you can see it's now selected the start point. Let me do this and let's stop it there. I'm going to press O and I'm going to add that one in. And it puts them in in sequence. Now, I have all my clips here and I could move them around. It could be a bit difficult to know where to move them. What I'm going to do is just here, I can change the magnification of the timeline so I can see more. So I just slid that across. So you might see some symbols with magnifying glasses with a minus and a plus in there. I could move this around by just clicking and clicking and dragging it over. And can you see it just moves it around for me. I could put this one at the end if I wanted to. So let me click on that again. If it doesn't go the first time, click and hold it. Come on, there we go. Great. How do I add some photos into here? Well, it's quite simple. I just click and drag it down to here and you can see it's in here. Now, iMovie is quite clever and Final Cut Pro does this too. It automatically ends, adds in this kind of little zooming effect. At the top, you've got so, this toolbar and it's got some tools in it. This one here is the crop. I'm just gonna click on it because you have some options. And you can see it's highlighted here that it says Ken Burns. Ken Burns is this zooming in kind of effect. He's a famous documentary maker who used this kind of effect a lot with images and they've named it after him. That's pretty cool. Right, so the other options I have is I can crop to fill and I could also fit. So fit shows me the whole picture, crop to fill only uh, fills in that bit. I like the Ken Burns effect. And you can see it's got this box here showing start and it's also got end. So I can change that and I'm gonna do that in a moment with another clip. So I've got that picture. Let me get another one in here. Let me add in the boys. Let's drop that in here. You can see I'm doing this two ways. Sometimes I'm clicking on the plus, sometimes I'm clicking click and drag. It depends what you like. Um, now, the thing about this one is it's putting this Ken Burns effect, but it's actually chopping Buzz off there. Not Buzz off, as Buzz off, but that's his name, Buzz. So let me click on cropping. You can see it's got the start and the end. I can move, this box is the one that's highlighted, the solid one. I can say that's where I want it to start. If I click here, I've now got the end one, and I have now changed where it is stopping and starting. So let's just go here. And I'm just clicking here in the timeline. Now, what if I wanted to put two pictures, one on top of the other? They call it picture in picture or split screen. I can do that. Let's take this one here. And actually, I'm going to do another one here. Let's do another one. I'm going to put these two. I'm going to put in Buzz over here. He's looking rather proud of himself. I'm going to click on Fit. And then I'm also going to choose this one, Woody, who likes the computer. And I'm just going to drop that so it's on top. Okay, but Woody at the moment is on top like this. What I want to do is in my preview window at the top are these video overlay options. It's this one here with the square and then another square underneath. Below that, it says cutaway, so it's right over the top of it. I can choose to do a split screen like that, or I can do picture in picture. So you've got Woody here and I could move that around. Now I could also do that with a video. Let's use the same clip here. I've got the video here and I'm just going to drop Woody across the top. I'm going to change the timing. Can you see it's too long here? Let's just slide that across. Again, I've got my overlay and I could do a picture in picture here. And you can see there he is. That doesn't have to be a picture. That could be a video as well. So there you go. That's some of the ways that you can get these in here. As you can see, it's easy to move them around from place to place. Okay. But now you're wondering, how can you smooth this out and actually add in some transitions and things? 
So between each clip, you can see here, it's just got this sort of dark gray line in here. That's just indicating that it's a straight cut between the two. Across the top, and this might be different in a different place in other software, you've got transitions. And you can see I've got a whole load here. And as I float over them, it gives you kind of a sample. Can you see as I scrub through? Remember I used that word scrub before. So you can get things to fly in, fly out, and so on. Now a common one, and by the way, you don't have to add transitions, is the cross dissolve. So I'm going to take that and I'm just going to drop it here. And you can see it's now got this symbol here. If I wanted to get rid of it, I can just backspace or delete. Let's put it back in and then you'll be able to see what it does. So now when I press the space bar, you could see that dissolve. Let me just do that again. There you go, it's a nice smooth spin. Now, let's put the spin in. Now I can just replace it by moving the mouse and dragging on top of it. When the plus sign appears, I've now got a different effect. How about that? That could make it more interesting. I bet some of you that have already created your videos are thinking, oh, I wanna go back and do that. So there you go. And it's a good idea when you're actually filming to think about the editing process. Let's see what else we have. I mentioned wipes, so you can Move that, let's move that to here. As you can see, I need to resize that one. Let's see what happens. There you go, it wipes across, that's a nice effect. You could do all sorts of things, like maybe you want to have a page curl, which would give you the effect of turning a page. There you go, and you've got right, and you've got a whole bunch here. You could spend the whole day messing around with these, although you've probably got your schoolwork to get on with as well. And as I said, if you want to get rid of any of them, you can just, Delete. Okay, I'm going to keep those in there. So, other things you want to add are titles. So you can put a title at the beginning, the end, or on top. I'm just going to have a quick look at the titles here, just so that we put one at the beginning, and then we'll have one that might come up. Like you see when someone's being interviewed, their name comes up down the bottom. So let's just choose that. I'm going to choose a standard one here. Let's just pop that right at the beginning. I just click and drag it down to here. And there you go, I can now type that in. I don't have to fill, fill in all of these, just the ones I want. So there we go, that's, that's a start. So you could go and delete the ones you don't want. So let's stop it, click on it, and then I can come to here, let me double click on it. I double clicked on it. Some things don't, you don't need to double click. Let's just delete those. I could have put that over the top of an image because it might have looked nice. So I could do that. Maybe I'll come back and do that. And over here, I want to put a title for our cat here. Her name's Socks. You want to have this one here. The ones that appear at the bottom of the screen are called standard thirds. They're lower thirds. That's what you're looking for. I'm going to use this one here, the reveal lower third. Can you see it's also got an effect as I move over it. Let's pop that down here. It's going to be on the screen for four seconds. Can you see it says 4.0 seconds. So let's put socks here. That's a cat's name. So what happens when I play that? So I've just moved to the timeline here. Let's hit play. Comes up and I can change the duration of it and it disappears. And then I could put another one here and I could change that to Luna. Okay, so there we go. So you can add in all sorts of titles. So I did say about putting in, say maybe a background here. Let's go to backgrounds. I could choose a background. Now this could be a photo. So what I'm going to do is, let's just choose one. Let's choose this curtain one here and let's just drop it down. If I drop it down there, and I could have put this in first and then put my title in. But do you see what it did? It pushed the title across. These are all really clever. I can pick this up and move it on top. There we go. Oh, and I need to make that a bit shorter because it's too long for the, that clip. So there we go. You've now added a title in. 
What about at the end? Let's put something in at the end there. And that's where you might want to put your credits. So there's your titles. If you scroll down, you can see some of them have got images. I don't know if any of you have seen Star Wars. Maybe you're a bit young for it. I don't know. You can see that you can have a Star Wars style one. But you might want to have some scrolling credits. See this here? Let's click and drag that down. And now I could go in there. I could put the title at the top. Starring Socks. as herself, Luna, as herself, and so on. Let's type that correctly. Always good to check your, your typing and everything, and also, you know, autocorrect can sort of mess these things up a bit. So now, at the end of my movie, I can put these, you can actually have deleted those if you want, but you can see you can have your credits, you can put in the camera person, the editor, the producer, the director, and anyone you want to say thank you to as well. Now, before we finish, and I'll show you how to share this and export it, I'm gonna click on audio. And here I have got different things like sound effects, music, garage band, there's a bit of software for creating your own. I could look all the way through this list for various things. But I'm just gonna type in cat because I might find some cat noises here and I can hear, ah, look, there's purring. Let's click and drag that. Let's drop this down at the bottom. I can slide it across maybe to here. And now when I play, hopefully you'll be able to, you may or may not hear it. It's hard to hear it when it's live. So you would hear purring there. And I could, if I click on it, I can go up into my settings at the top here. You can see it's got volume. I can choose to reduce the volume here. So let's do that. I can just slide here. That's the volume level and you'll want to be able to listen back. You can put music in. So just a word of warning about music is copyright can be a bit of a problem. And if you choose something that's maybe something you've bought you might find that the problem is, is YouTube might detect it and delete your video. So here we go. Let's just, uh, let me find something. I'm not going to use, oh, how about this one? Mission Impossible. Let's pop that down here. So I've got my music down here. You can see that if I click on my volume up at the top, again, I can change the volume levels. I'm just going to go over to here and I'm going to just allow some of this music to be heard here. So let me see if I can get some audio, if you can hear it. So let's go to here and let's tap play. Maybe you can hear that. So I can adjust the volume. You can actually, you can see there's a line here. I can slide that up and down as well to change the volume. So that is how you create your project. Oh, let me just quickly duck over to the questions here. The last question. Ah, that's a good question about how does TikTok get away with it? It might be because the clip is so short and they might be a bit forgiving. YouTube has got strict policies around copyrights. So you can actually Google uh, royalty free music. Some of it is free. Um, you can find quite a bit of it for free and you can also um, you, Some of it you pay for and then you can use it as much as you like some of it is relatively cheap Pricing possibly around about the ten pound mark you can pay hundreds You could get a composer in and they could charge you even more if you're musically talented Well, then you could create something yourself. I would say that looking for something for free There's a lot of it now so you want to look for royalty-free stock and you can find stuff there. Um, sometimes if you just use a little bit of music, it can be okay. But I would be very cautious of this. Um, some music, classical music that might be really old, may not have copyright on it. But I can tell you that I have put video onto YouTube that has got um, music such as 
I'm trying to think of who you youngsters all listen to. Justin Bieber. Is Justin Bieber somebody um, you, that you listen to? Then you perhaps, um, that would pick it up and say, no, 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 you can't have that. But if you're just doing it around the house and things like that, it could be useful if you're just sharing it amongst your friends. Just don't put it on YouTube. I'm going to have to look into TikTok and see why they don't pick it up there. Okay, so I've done that. I've created my video. I've put some music in and there's so much more that you can do. But this will give you a really, really good start. You now want to be able to share it. So you need to export it. And if I go into file at the top here and all of them will have different share options and you may have seen things like boxes with an arrow pointing up indicating share on some software. So in file, I can see that I've got share and I can share it to an email. So it would compress it down to make it a nice small file for that. I could send it straight to YouTube if I've got my login details and you might need your parents permission for that. Same for Facebook. So it generates it in a way that it plays nicely on that software. I want to send it out as a file so I could then send it to Suntrap and potentially share it with anyone and keep it on my computer. And you can share this more than once. So I could share on YouTube and then I could come back and do this file. So let me just click on file. And it's asking me the description of this movie so I can put in here cats. Not the famous cats movie. Tags, I could put in here cats, then put in commas, socks, Luna, Woody, Woody and Buzz are the name of the other two cats. I'm sure you can guess where we got those names from. Oh, I mistyped socks there. Let's just fix that. I want to output the video and the audio. If it's just audio that you want, because you're creating a podcast, you could just do audio only, but we don't need that. The resolution, good one for YouTube is 1080p. That's how many lines of information. The higher this number, the better the quality. Having said that, if you want a small file to send it to someone, you might want to choose the small one. 4K is the highest it does here. That's very high definition. It's ultra high definition. It's really good. I like using it because it's just got good quality. But for this, I'm just going to do 1080p. If you want to know what the P stands for, it's for progressive, which means that old TV sets, when they used to transmit it to you, here's a bit of trivia for you. They used to send lines, one set of lines, and then another set of lines in between to make up the picture. They don't do that anymore. Technology's got a lot better. The quality you want, you can have best, high, medium, or low. I always like to go for as good as I can. So I normally start off with best. If I don't like it, I can always come back. The compression, that's how quickly this actually uh, sends it out. Faster it is, the lower the quality. Better quality might take a bit longer. I'm just going to do faster here just to see if it does it quickly. It's telling me roughly how long this is. This is the length of the video. And this is the roughly the size of the video, 2.35 gigabytes. So you can see if I lower it, it makes a big difference. 382 megabytes if I go to quality as high as opposed to to best and let's just see if the better quality changes it. That doesn't change anything. That's just how quickly it does it. So let's click on next. I'm going to put it into my movies folder. Actually no, I'll put it here into my media and let's just pop it in there. I'm going to call it cat movie and click on save. Now I'm going to have to wait for it to export. So up at the top here, can you see this circle? That's showing how long it's going to take. That's also the share button here, that one that I mentioned. And you can see nothing has really happened here yet. It does take time. So, ah, oh, there you go. You can see something is happening. So let's leave that happening whilst I check on the video. So um, does Suntrap have a preferred file to send my film into your email? So how do you send it to Suntrap? Well, I would say that the larger the file, the better. It could get too big. Um, if it does look very big, like I would say anything maybe over two gigabytes. Now that's a two and a half minute film. You're meant to do it as one minute. So you're probably gonna be less than that. 
you won't really be able to email it unless you make it low quality. And we don't want low quality. We want better quality than that. You want to use something that I use a lot, which is free, and it is called wetransfer.com. Let's go to that website, shall we? So this is my website, by the way, and I'm going to be adding more clips in here. Um, so come back to that. Let's just go to here and let's go to WeTransfer. So what you do is you need the email address for Suntrap. You need to pop that in here. So you just type that in. I can't remember there it's on the top of my off the top of my head. I can click here to select a file or I could come over to my finder here and I could just, well, this is a still image. I can just click and drag it over. And this will allow you to send big files and then they can download it at the other end using Suntrap. You don't need an account for this. I do have an account, but you don't need it for file. It should easily handle the files that you've got. So I would say that is, let me just, sorry, I just need to make an adjustment here so you can actually see my desktop. So let's just um, change that to, sorry, got to quickly adjust it so you can see what I'm looking at. Um, mm -hmm. Yep, yeah. okie doke. Right, let's just go to here. I'm going to choose Safari and we transfer. There we go. So you can see it there. That's one of my images that I've got. So I went to wetransfer.com, that's W-E-T-R-A-N-S-F-E-R.com. Um, I did show you my website here, which has got um, more videos coming here. So you'll be able to go into episodes and actually be able to see or link over to my YouTube channel and you'll be able to see videos that I'm adding on there, showing you more about editing. I'll be doing some of those this week. So there you go. So that is how you can create your video. Let me just go back to him. I'm just going to look at iMovie. Aha, it has now created my video. So I've now got that in iMovie. I'm going to go to my finder here and let's just go to my There we go. So let's, oh, that's not the right one. Let me just find where it is first. I need to go to here and then here. And there's my cat movie. It's come up over there. So I'm just going to adjust this so that you can see what I'm looking at. So much going on here. Right. There we go. And you can see the video and you can see the little thumbnail image. I can play it just by pressing the space bar on the Mac. So that will play, although you can't see that. So let's just. She's saying thanks, Gary. Sounds like something Great. So there's my movie. Looks like you've all got a lot you can get on with, so you can actually start creating these. If you've got questions, feel free to drop me a line. And I'm just going to go and quickly check on the chat here. So great. Thanks very much. I hope that helps. And I hope that you will be able to now go and create your videos. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned and good luck with the competition and stay safe.